interested in if you believe a greater eternal universe some call God's kingdom in heaven. There is only one kingdom in my opinion and one universe. Yes, I believe that universe to be the kingdom of God, but it's only visible as such when looked at a certain way, as God. I believe our thoughts to be the building blocks of God's thoughts. The way the universe utilizes discovery and wonder, as expressed in us, in my opinion points to a purpose for its own creation and maintenance. I believe we are in fact the same entity inserting itself into countless experiences, for the sake of experience. What I am trying to understand is how the universe apparently is not entirely God, since he has shown that there is much that is not and will not be a part of him and his kingdom, an eternal universe, in and of the universe known to humanity. What makes you think the universe is not the entirety of God? The universe is all, whatever shape or size that all may take. I don't think we as individual humans can ever know the entirety of God. I don't believe the Big Bang was the beginning of creation if that's what you're implying. The universe is a single field of energy in different densities. Our best observations of energy say that it is never created or destroyed, it can only transfer to different forms. I believe God may be called a universe, but that universe is separate in its characteristics, righteous and eternal, from a universe containing both good and evil, a universe possibly finite, the universe seen and known. Well then you need to account for some things. For example, if God is separate from creation, how is God created? Where does God reside if not within creation? If God is responsible for all creation then God is responsible for evil as well. I think the universe is righteous in that it allows for existence. That alone, for me, justifies the darkest terrors. I also assert that God is eternal. The energy that creates all within the universe is eternal as far as we can tell. God came to be with the creation of the known universe. He is in and of this universe, separate, eternal, seen only with his own eyes. Is he responsible for all evil? Am I responsible if a child chooses to break the law? Something cannot come to be and be eternal. That's a contradiction. Also, something cannot be of the universe and separate from it. The universe is described as all existing space and matter. If you provide the circumstances in which that child breaks the law, then yes you are responsible. God creates us in the circumstances in which we exist. Every thought and action we have is caused by the tide of time that came before it. Free will is an illusion. We do what we must provided the circumstance. Something cannot come to be and be eternal? I thought you saw that, of the universe and separate from it, is another way of describing God. A child chooses to break the law and I'm responsible? On what planet? Free will is an illusion? You will have a hard time convincing me I am a robot. No, I never said the universe came into existence. If our observations of energy are correct, it has always existed and always will. The only thing that is created or destroyed is the forms within that energy. Those forms are not separate, they are part of a continuous field. Isn't it a tenet of Christianity that we should abandon our will for the will of God? That's what I'm asserting. Your will is not your own, it is God's. We have no choice but to follow the forces that push us through time. No, I said it came into existence, and it is hard to believe, but it is possible it will return to the nothingness from which it came, and whether that is the case, or it has always existed, is not important, fact is, God is eternal. And yes, God requires that as people be in his will, adhering to his word. What is your evidence that the universe came into existence? What is your evidence that the universe may be able to return to nothing? If you state God is eternal you need to base that on observable evidence that suggests how that is possible. What exactly is his word? The Bible. I'm sorry but I would rather rely on current observations of science than 2000 year old observations of goat herders. That's not meant to be insulting to you, it's just my reason for discrediting a lot of that in my own views. Which of the New Testament writers was a goat herder? I meant the Bible in general, the Israelites were nomadic herders of the ancient Middle East. No offense to goat herders, I bet I would enjoy that profession better than my own, but when it comes to understanding the universe, they just can't compete with a modern astrophysicist. Christianity is by definition the religion of the New Covenant, to mindlessly regurgitate your ad hominems, Bronze Age, and goat herders against Christianity is extremely weak at best. Regarding your statement, when it comes to understanding the universe, the ancient Israelites just can't compete with a modern astrophysicist, well, modern astrophysicists came to their present understanding through their cumulative discoveries in time, so that would be self-evident, wouldn't it? I may have been too harsh in conceptualizing that the ancient people that formulated your understanding of the universe, but let's be clear, they were ancient people. 
The amount of knowledge that has been compiled since then is staggering and something early Christians could only equate with magic. You are relying on the insight of ancient Middle Easterners for your worldview. That cannot be justified in my opinion. All humans come to understanding through cumulative knowledge. The Christians built off the Jews that built off the Egyptian and the Babylonians. We have the advantage of building off of all of their sources, plus everything that has come after them. Any average person today with access to internet has more information than anyone in the Bible. You have the tools to figure out the universe better than them, do so. Think for yourself. I believe my worldview is an application of valid spiritual truths and principles. Knowledge and discovery are welcome adjuncts to truth, but they do not change it. Knowledge is the understanding of truth, discovery is the process of unveiling truth. You cannot have truth without both of those factors. Science is the process we use to discover truth and understand what is and what is not truth. Opinion that is accepted as truth without collaborating science cannot be considered truth merely on the word of other human beings with the same capabilities as you and me. Less capability when you're talking about ancient people that wrote the Bible. Fascinating. Nevertheless your truth is limited to the material. Mine is not. The universe is made of one thing, energy, E equals mc squared. There is only the material. Even your thoughts are a physical pattern of energy within your brain. So then your God, energy, is eternal? According to the first law of thermodynamics, yes. How do you reconcile that with infinite regression? Infinite regression is the idea that nothing can be known for certain because the basis of that knowledge can always be called into question again and again throughout infinity. I'm fine with not knowing anything as absolute truth. It's good enough for me to reason the most plausible explanation and admit my limitations as a human being. Infinity is something we cannot grasp in its entirety, we can only think of it in an abstract form. Only God knows all right? If you're a god, energy slash material is eternal then doesn't time reach backward infinitely? How could we possibly get to now? Time is a property of the flow of energy, as that flow changes so does time. Examples of this are evident in the calculations regarding black holes in the Big Bang. Time is subject to motion, if the energy in the universe suddenly stopped, so would time until it started again. Say if the known universe was all sucked into a black hole, all of that energy would condense under infinite pressure and slow or stop time, perhaps until it reached a singularity and exploded back out again to start time over. Still, in your model time stops and then starts again, so you still have an infinite regression of time with intermittent stoppages, and thus an infinite number of black holes. With that hypothesis, how did we get to the one which produced our present time? Your misunderstanding. Say every black hole spawns a Big Bang inside of it just like ours. Inside of those would be more black holes, with Big Bangs inside of them. All of these realities would exist in separate states of time and be representative of every stage in the development of such a local universe? So this moment is happening here now, but somewhere, Jesus is just being crucified, somewhere else dinosaurs roam, somewhere else our own son is dying. All points on the timeline would exist at once. You see? The Christian God is transcendent, meaning he is above and independent of the material world. He is the first cause of all things, and what those goat herders wrote about him actually makes much more sense than your pantheist God. I disagree. The Christian God is supernatural, or beyond nature. Which means he has no natural mechanism to exist. What exactly is material and what is not? Material means real. No, material means things made of matter, it does not mean real. That's your bias speaking. Matter is made of energy, everything is energy. If your definition of God is not part of that energy it doesn't exist. I won't belabor the point further, I just hope you'll consider the possibility that the universe itself must have had an ultimate beginning, and that beginning must have had a cause which would need to be uncaused. That's my God. The universe does not need an ultimate beginning. The only reason you argue such is so you can claim some place for your non-material God's existence. If your god can't exist in reality, time to find a new god. 